Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we're actually going to introduce a new series, and uh, this actually came with uh, encouragement from TechLore. Go check out TechLore's channel, because uh, something he gets on his channel a lot is questions about FOSS and business, and he just said that's just not something that he spends a lot of time doing. But I've actually spent 10 years working for myself, my own uh, home office, and I do use free resources when I can. I've done so for a long time, but for the last four years, I've been focused on switching anything and everything I can to FOSS alternatives. So we're talking about any type of background technologies, any type of customer acquisition, any type of customer management, any, any of these types of things. We're actually going to dive into this and do a whole lot of in-depth. Some of the videos are going to be recorded like this on the nice 60 frame per second camera if it's more of a philosophical discussion. Of course, if I'm showing off some type of piece of software, we're going to go ahead and, and use uh, the computer's layout as, as usual for those ones, just to give us the ideas. Now, what we want to do here is I want to get out a, a basic introduction and a call for any questions that you might have. I'm going to use some of those questions to guide when and where I, I do the videos. We're going to shoot for a target of about one video per week in this series. It'll probably be a Monday thing for a while. Uh, whereas I used to do the top 10 or the top fives, I guess, on Mondays, but I haven't done those for a while. And uh, I, I just, I see the need for talking about FOSS alternatives, maybe some Linux alternatives, but even if you're not yet using Linux, this is actually going to be a good course either way because we're going to be looking at a lot of the different options that are out there. There are obviously some downsides. I know a lot about server management. Some of these tools you deploy on your own server, although many of them you can easily spin up on a cPanel and not have to worry about it as long as you have a cPanel account. But it would be good to have a server guy in your back pocket. I'm willing to help you look over things if you want. Send me an email and obviously that's a part of my business. So that's not, nothing I can do for free. Uh, but nevertheless, having somebody in your back pocket that you can have look at things from time to time is a good approach. So I identified like six basic or five basic ideas right here that we want to look at. Let's just go ahead and use our top five stuff, right? May as well. <laughs> okay, so um, let's go ahead and get into these. Number one, we're going to talk about Linux distributions. So which distributions are going to be best for you? There's not going to be a single answer. I'll tell you the things that I use. I use Linux Mint for my web design stuff. I'm using MX Linux right now for my authoring type stuff. And uh, there's, there's some other distributions and some purposes that you might want to use. What we want to do is we want to talk about which Linux distributions you're going to want to use. We're going to be talking about do you need dedicated computers or no dedicated computers? Do you just want to do separate user accounts on a single computer? We'll look at all of these different approaches because there's different things that you want to do. Some of those are more philosophical. Some of those are going to be on the computer looking at some advantages. Of course, have a look at my Distro War series to see some of the various distributions that we have uh, just to guide the decisions you want to take if you want to use Linux for your business, which is a very good option. We're talking about not having licensing fees. We're talking about systems that work on on computers that you can easily pick up and use in some cases. Obviously some businesses you're going to have to stick with Windows and Mac depending on what you're doing. But nevertheless you actually have a lot of options in that field so we're going to talk about Linux distributions. Number two, I touched on this briefly, we'll talk about uh, do you need a dedicated computer for your business? Some people each business that they have, they have a dedicated computer for that. In some instances, I use a dedicated computer. In some instances, I use a dedicated user account. So here on, I have a variety of different YouTube channels. Each of those all get used on the same computer, the same install. They just have their own separate user accounts. This way I can manage everything separately. The OBS settings are separate. Everything else is there. It's all on the same hard drive. So it's it's easy to making a backup of that simple hard drive, simple backup strategy, make a backup of the hard drive. Something goes wonky. I have a backup of everything that is that is over there. 
Uh, some instances, maybe you're more advanced and you want to use like Cubes Linux and you just give each business its own cube. That would be really good if you have a lot of smaller businesses or you just need to keep an eye on all of them at the same time and keep a degree of isolation. Uh, but uh, ultimately, one of the better options you can do, especially if you're just starting out, if you have a lower income and you're kind of bootstrapping it from the beginning, is using your computer but have a dedicated flash drive for the Linux distribution that you're going to do. We'll kind of talk about those as we go along. Number three, we're going to look at alternatives, FOSS applications. And uh, so in this case here, we're talking about customer acquisition or a customer management. You can use Salesforce. It has integration. It has a lot of things. It also though, comes with a little bit of a pricey price sales tag. There may be some free accounts. I don't remember. I haven't used Salesforce in about five years at this point. But there's an excellent FOSS one called Sweet CRM, which is actually very sweet. You can do a lot of good things with it. There's applications like that. Why use Trello? Of course, Trello, you can get a free service, but who's slurping up the data in the background? They want to grab all that data about you, about your users, about your clients. They want to harvest emails. There's a lot of things that I feel a little turry about. If I want to bring somebody on board to work on some projects, when I add them to the Trello board, I don't really want to have to give some third party company my my uh, uh, person's email address. Maybe they already have Trello accounts or a contractor working with multiple people and now it's going to get confusing which Trello login to use and things. So we'll talk about things like Canboard and there's a few other good ones out there as well. I'm using Canboard for my current startup just because I can get it set up easily. There's other ones that are probably better, but they're going to require a little bit more of a difficult server setup. And so I'm just gonna focus on the easier ones just to start. You might wanna just focus on what's easy and fast to start and uh, move into them as you have needs to do that. So we're talking about FOSS applications and alternatives, not just you know GIMP for Photoshop, but we're gonna be looking at things like Canboard to replace Trello, Sweet CRM to replace Salesforce. We're we'll looking at uh, uh, Easy Appointments as one I'm using for calendar stuff. I, I kind of hate it, but uh, we'll run with it for a little while. But we're looking at FOSS alternatives, not just for doing the business, but for the back end business structures as well. There are a lot of excellent opportunities that you can use out there on your own servers. So number four, server tech. Uh, we'll go ahead and talk about that. Now, this is the one that uh, if you already know how to manage some servers, if you have some experience in web design and server management, then a lot of these background resources I've talked about are going to be very good, very easy for you. You're, you're going to enjoy it. You're going to have a great time with it. Uh, if you don't, you want to bring on somebody on board and ultimately you're going to want to have professionals in your field anyway. Like I said, I've been doing this for about 10 years. If you need help with server stuff, reach out to me. I'll, I'll let you know what my rates are and things like that. But you want to look at your server technologies. Do you want to use a cPanel? Uh, one thing I'm going to be looking at is I'm going to be looking at ISP config. Why? If you need a VPS, my current VPS is excellent. I can give everybody their own cPanels. The downside is cPanel is getting expensive and they just changed their licensing again, which is going to cause a lot of businesses to have to pay a lot more. Well, there's actually a, a, a configuration system called ISP config. I have never even looked at it yet and I'm anxious to. I can get ISP config set up on an A2 hosting server for $5 a month versus the VPSs start at like 40 because of the cPanel licensing. So we're we'll talking about that type of stuff. Maybe you need EC2 clouds or something that they do at Linode. So we want to look at Amazon. We'll look at EC2. I might even ugh, look at Azure. I've never looked at Azure, but we might. Uh, I want to talk about all those different server techs. I use AWS. I'm um, I would want to switch some things over to like DigitalOcean or uh, Linode or things like that. But at the same time, what I don't want to do is um, I don't want to leave you with only a single option. We want to look at all of the different options that are out there and we will do this. Like I said, this is going to be a long range plan. This is going to be a year at least doing videos every week. Um, so that's some of the things we're doing, going to be doing there. And the next one I have, the number five, is business best practices. We want to talk about the, the ways you run a business, just some of the background stuff that we're going to do. We're going to be looking at uh, 
what applications do you use? What's your background infrastructure? How do you set this up? Who do you give access to? Who do you hire? Who do you fire? Uh, there's all these types of things that you need in terms of this. And some of this is probably beyond the scope of just the FOSS applications and alternatives. But we do want to look quite a bit at business best practices, particularly when we're using FOSS. One of the things you have to do on FOSS is you have to man maintain and manage your updates and things like that. You need to make sure you have more robust backup strategies because you're not relying on a Salesforce or on a Trello or or on uh, you know these other companies that are providing these services. So these are the things that we want to do, we want to look at. So there is kind of the basic five things uh, subject to adding more. I have number six on my list and it's blanked out right now because I couldn't think of number six, but I might down the road and you guys might tell me about number six. Now this is not just five videos, like I said. We're, each one of these is going to have dozens of videos. So let me know the things you're most interested in seeing right away out of the gate in the, uh, in the comments and then we'll go ahead and use these to kind of develop the plan and talk about what we're going to be doing as far as which videos we're going to do and what order we're going to do them. And it's going to be scattershot approach. I'm not just going to do, okay, Linux distributions, all right, six months later, we're moving on to dedicated accounts and computers. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to jump back and forth based upon the things people want to see. We'll, we'll stop and look at a software one day. We'll sit down here on my bench in the backyard and do, do some philosophy the next day. You know, we'll kind of jump around and scattergory the approach out just to get us the better options. But this is what we want to look forward to on probably our Mondays is when I might do these. Maybe I'll switch it around Mondays, Tuesdays, or throw maybe an extra video in on Saturday if I need to. But we'll kind of shift the channel in this general direction where we'll be looking at FOSS alternatives because really that's why I switched to Linux. Windows was no longer an option. I want to look at other alternatives. And now that we've looked at other alternatives, there are amazing open source alternatives for a lot of the things that you need for a business infrastructure. So that's the direction I'm pivoting things in right now. And uh, again, have a look at uh, Techlore's channel. He's the one that uh, recommended that I do this this type of thing because of my experience in FOSS alternatives and, and in business. So from that, let's go ahead and uh, wrap this one up from here. Thanks for coming along and thanks to all the supporters. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.